All right, boys and girls, today is your very last lesson in our astronomy series. So here we go. We are going to learn the rest of the planets in our solar system. Here are some words we need to know before we get started. As always, let's go over them. First word to listen for in our story is categorize. Categorize means to sort, put into a group with other similar objects. An example of this is, my teacher asked me to categorize the stack of books as fiction or nonfiction for our classroom library. Our next word to listen for in our story is outer. Outer means far from the center, outside. An example of this is, the outer part of the Earth's surface is the part we live on. The next word we're going to listen for in our story is probes. Probes are tools for exploring things that cannot be seen easily. An example of this is probes have collected a lot of information about the surface of Mars. And the last word we're going to listen for in our story is violent. Violent means dangerously rough. An example of this is, when I was wrestling with my brother and he got hurt, my mom said we were being too violent. Here we go, boys and girls. Let's get started with our story. Today, while I'm reading to you the information on our outer planets, I want you to listen carefully to learn the name of each planet and what makes it unique. In the last read aloud, you learned about the four inner planets of our solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Now you will learn about the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, as well as famous dwarf planet Pluto. These planets are furthest from the sun on the outside part of our solar system. The first important difference between the inner planets and the outer planets is that the inner planets are all made up of rocks and metals, whereas the outer planets are made up of different types of gases. The planet Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun. In Roman mythology, Jupiter was the king of the gods the strongest and most powerful of all. The largest planet in our solar system is named after him. Being the largest planet makes Jupiter unique. Jupiter is so big that you could stuff about 1,300 planet Earths inside of it. It takes Jupiter nearly 12 Earth years to make one revolution around the sun. However, Jupiter rotates on its axis faster than any other planet in the solar system. This massive planet rotates all the way around on its axis in less than 10 hours. Jupiter is made mostly of hydrogen and other gases. Because of its fast rotation and the mixing of its gases, Jupiter is an extremely violent or dangerously rough stormy place. The best known feature on Jupiter is its large red spot. This spot is actually a massive storm. This stormy red spot makes Jupiter unique and it helps us remember what the planet looks like. This storm is so big that you could fit three planet Earths inside of it. Jupiter can be seen with the naked eye from Earth and sometimes you can see its red spot with an ordinary telescope. There are at least 63 moons in orbit around Jupiter. Most of them are very small. However, four of these moons are well known. They were all discovered first by the famous astronomer Galileo. These are easily visible with a pair of binoculars. Each is interesting in its own way, particularly Europa, the small one in the upper right. 
Europa is slightly smaller than our own moon, and yet for many astronomers, it is one of the most fascinating celestial bodies in the solar system. Europa's surface is covered in ice, and its atmosphere contains a lot of oxygen. Many astronomers believe that beneath Europa's ice, there is an ocean of liquid water. This means that maybe, just maybe, there is some form of life on this distant little moon. So far, the only place in the solar system that we know has life is our own planet Earth. The next planet in the solar system is Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. It is the second largest planet in the solar system. Although it is much smaller than Jupiter, Saturn is famous for its rings. It is not the only planet with rings, but no other planet has rings like Saturn's. Its rings make Saturn unique and easy to recognize. This incredible photo was taken by an unmanned orbiter in 2004. Saturn has several layers with different types of clouds and it is quite stormy, though not as stormy as its neighbor Jupiter. These layers and clouds are part of the planet. Remember, outer planets are made of gases. Because it is so far from the sun, it takes Saturn nearly 30 Earth years to make one complete orbit. Different parts of Saturn rotate at different speeds. But for the most part, Saturn rotates on its axis very quickly, taking a little over 10 hours to complete one rotation. The rings of Saturn are always moving around the planet. They are made up mainly of ice and a few other types of materials. The rings are basically huge collections of dust with some large chunks here and there. Nobody is sure how the rings got there. Some astronomers believe the rings formed when one of Saturn's moons exploded and some debris or broken pieces became trapped in the orbit. Others say the material in the rings is left over from the time when Saturn was formed billions of years ago. You can see Saturn from Earth during certain time of our year, and with an ordinary telescope, you can see the rings. The seventh planet, Uranus, has the coldest atmosphere of any planet in the solar system. Its cold atmosphere makes Uranus unique because it is so far from the sun. It takes Uranus 84 Earth years to make one complete orbit. Uranus is mostly made up of hydrogen, but its atmosphere also contains a lot of ice and other substances not found on Jupiter or Saturn. Uranus is named after a Greek god of the sky making it the only planet other than Earth that is not named after a Roman god. Although it is possible to see Uranus from Earth with a naked eye, you really have to know where and when to look for it because it appears very dim and not very bright from here on Earth. Uranus has one very special characteristic. It rotates on its side. You can't see it in this image, but in comparison to Earth and the other planets, Uranus's axis is sideways, as though someone turned the planet on its side. Lying on its side makes Uranus unique. The planet Neptune is the eighth and final planet in the solar system. In Roman mythology, Neptune was the god of the sea so this is a fitting name given the planet's beautiful blue color. Its blue color and its distance from the sun make Neptune unique. Astronomers still do not know exactly why Neptune is blue and it will probably be a while before they figure it out. That is because Neptune is nearly 3 billion miles from the sun, making it very difficult and expensive to send unmanned probes to explore it. 
it takes Neptune nearly 165 Earth years to orbit the sun. The planet is never visible to the naked eye from Earth, and you will need a fairly powerful telescope to get a good view of its beautiful color. Not so very long ago, students in school were taught that there were nine planets in the solar system, including Pluto. In fact, ever since Pluto was discovered in 1930, it has been considered a planet. However, in 2006, astronomers decided to categorize Pluto as a dwarf planet, one of several such bodies in our solar system. They decided to sort planets into two categories, dwarf, meaning little, and regular, categorizing Pluto as a dwarf planet means they put Pluto in the dwarf planet group. In Roman mythology, Pluto was the god of the underworld, a dark and dreary place. This is a good name for such a cold and distant dwarf planet. Pluto is about 4 billion miles from the sun, so it is extremely cold and dark out there. The planet is made almost entirely of frozen nitrogen. Most nitrogen found on Earth is a gas, but out in the depths of space, it is frozen. It takes Pluto about 243 Earth years to orbit the sun. We have a lot to learn about Pluto and other celestial bodies in the outer reaches of the solar system, but it is not easy to explore this area. For now, this is about the best photo we have of Pluto, and it was taken from 3 billion miles away by a special spacecraft called the Hubble Space Telescope. So far, Pluto remains unexplored. A special probe was launched toward Pluto in the year 2003. It took 12 years for that probe to reach Pluto. Boys and girls, just like you did yesterday, today you get to write an opinion statement about which outer planet you would want to visit. Would you want to visit Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune? You may use the sentence starter on your Google document when you open it up. I would like to visit the outer planet because my example says I would like to visit the outer planet Saturn because I want to be able to see its rings up close. Remember, you need to add on and provide details and information you've heard from the story. You will be provided with a planet chart that has facts on it you can use, or you can always go back and listen to the story again. Have fun, and we can't wait to hear your opinions on why you want to visit a specific outer planet. Have a great day.